The white coat investor says tax rates aren't going up, cash value life insurance is a ripoff, and that you shouldn't consider a Roth conversion. In today's video, we're going to debunk these claims one by one. Hey folks, I'm best-selling author David McKnight. I've gotten into a lot of memorable dust-ups with financial gurus over the years, not the least exciting of which was a feisty exchange I had with a white coat investor. In his critique of the power of zero, he began by criticizing my warning that tax rates would be going up. Take a listen to what he had to say. The first problem I have with people advocating for this is that they do a lot of fear mongering. They like to say things like tax rates have never been this low, so they're sure to go up in the future. There's absolutely nothing that is particularly different about tax rates now versus what they have been in the past. Tax rates do change with the political winds, but if all you're looking at is the historical data, it would seem just as likely that tax rates are going to go down as up. That argument is pretty easy to refute. Well, this argument is not, in fact, easy to refute. In my documentary, The Power of Zero, The Tax Rate is Coming, we interviewed experts from across the country about the future of tax rates. Here's the interesting thing. They were all looking at the same data, and they all seem to agree that taxes in the future are going to be dramatically higher than they are Today, a handful of experts, including former Comptroller General of the federal government, David Walker, even agreed that tax rates would have to double to keep our country solvent. This should serve as a warning cry to all Americans, particularly those in the 22 and 24% tax brackets who have accumulated the lion's share of their retirement savings in tax deferred accounts like 401ks and IRAs. The white coat investor then took exception to my recommending that investors consider Roth conversions. Roth is great. However, when you're in your peak earning years and you have to choose between tax deferred and Roth contributions, the right choice for most is the tax deferred account. There is a very real cost to going Roth. For example, if you have a $17,500 401k contribution and you're in the 33% tax bracket, going Roth is going to cost you $5,775 in taxes. That is hardly insignificant, yet that is what these folks are advocating you do. Pay your taxes now while they're low. Well, 33% isn't low compared to the rate at which most people are going to be withdrawing money. Conversions are the same deal. They cost money, and if you're in a high bracket, they cost a lot of money. At a certain point, one has to ask oneself if the white coat investor ever actually read The Power of Zero. This is not a book whose target market is those in high marginal tax brackets. I have never, in fact, argued that investors at these higher levels of income should perforce consider Roth conversions. Short of a true doubling of tax rates on all Americans, even for those in the highest marginal tax brackets, it's hard to make the math work. This is again why all of my examples in the power of zero were clearly focused on Americans in the 22 and 24% tax brackets. Okay, folks, it's time for the power of zero question of the day. What are your thoughts on the white coat investors approach to retirement planning? Go ahead and put your answers in the comments section below. The white coat investor then trains his sights on cash value life insurance, or as I describe it in chapter five of The Power of Zero, the life insurance retirement plan. Perhaps the biggest reason I dislike this idea of going for a 0% tax bracket in retirement is it causes people to invest in cash value life insurance policies that they wouldn't otherwise buy. Remember, you buy life insurance with after-tax dollars, so you can put $17,500 into your 401k, or you can pay a life insurance premium of $11,725. The 401k investment grows at 8% and then is withdrawn at a 15% tax rate and the life insurance cash value grows at 4% and then borrowed tax-free, but not interest-free. 30 years later, the difference is $149,682 versus $38,029. Which would you rather have? I don't particularly think that cash value insurance compares favorably with a taxable account, but I can understand why some conservative, highly taxed investors might find it attractive. However, when you compare life insurance to a 401k or Roth IRA, the insurance nearly always comes out looking terrible.
First of all, getting to the 0% tax bracket doesn't require using cash value life insurance, and none of my books have ever made such a claim. In fact, many of our clients rely solely on all the various forms of Roth IRAs to mitigate the effects of future tax increases. In the right circumstances, however, there are some compelling reasons to consider cash value life insurance. With rates of return between 4 and 6% net of fees over time, this is a safe and productive way to grow at least a portion of your retirement portfolio. Furthermore, most companies who offer cash value life insurance will allow you to receive your death benefit in advance of your death for the purpose of paying for long-term care. And should you die peacefully in your sleep, never having needed long-term care, someone still getting a death benefit, probably your kids or grandkids. So there isn't that sensation of having paid for something you hope you never have to use. Furthermore, as I said in my recent video, the Dave Ramsey buy term and invest the difference fallacy, I don't think it's useful to compare life insurance cash values that average 4 to 6% net of fees over time to stock market portfolios that average 8% or more. Most investors consider the cash value on these policies to be part of the bond portion of their overall portfolio and are perfectly satisfied with bond-like returns over time. In fact, most of the time, they're simply reaching into the retirement portfolio, removing the bonds and replacing them with cash value life insurance. And in the process, they increase increase their overall return, they lower their overall risk, and they reduce the standard deviation of their entire portfolio. Well, about a year after we faced off over his critique of the power of zero, Joe Biden got elected president of the United States. And once elected, he began to float some pretty aggressive tax proposals. So it was with great interest that I noted the following tweet from the White Coat Investor's Twitter account in response to Joe Biden's proposal. These proposals read like a war on investors. Let's see, losing long-term capital gains brackets, small business taxes raised, no more step-up basis, real estate investors hit, and energy investors hit, tax what you want to see less of. If these were passed, I think i do a huge Roth conversion. So this is a bit of an about face for the white coat investor. He went from a position where very few, if any Americans should consider the Roth conversion to if Joe Biden gets his way in the highest marginal tax bracket reverts to 39.6%, he of all people will preemptively execute a massive Roth conversion before those tax increases go into place. Well, guess what, folks? Joe Biden doesn't have to get his way for tax rates to revert to 39.6%. In fact, for tax rates to go up on all Americans across the board, all Congress has to do is nothing. Why? Because the Tax Cut and Jobs Act expires on January 1st, 2026, and tax rates for all income levels will return to their pre-2018 levels, which is precisely why I continue to encourage pre-retirees, particularly those in the 22 and 24% tax brackets, to take Take advantage of these historically low tax rates before they go up for good. So I was so encouraged to see that I'd enlisted another ally in the battle to get the message out on the reality of higher taxes and the importance of Roth conversions that I tweeted back, I'm glad you're starting to come around, at which point he blocked me. Folks, the national debt has never been higher, and with climbing interest rates, the costs of servicing all that debt will grow to unsustainable levels. As this reality comes into focus, more and more economists and financial gurus are coming over into my camp and advocating for a tax-free approach to retirement planning. As we draw the battle lines in the fight against higher taxes, I'm grateful to count the white coat investor as an ally, even if I can no longer read his tweets. If you're looking for an ally in the battle against higher taxes, head on over to davemcknight.com. We're happy to lend a hand. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. And feel free to make any comments or ask questions in the comments section below. This is Dave McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.